Hi everyone, my name is Danny Alcini, and today I want to show you a small tutorial about a really powerful workflow. And what's unique about this workflow is that it offers you a very short path to get usable, editable surface data from shapes that are far too complex to surface manually. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show uh, sort of a lion sculpture. And this is something that is really not um, feasible to surface within a reasonable amount of time using conventional surface methods. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to import this mesh file. I'm going to begin by accessing my digitized shape preparation workbench. And I'm going to go up to the import digitization file here. So I have this mesh file on my hard drive. I'm going to navigate to it. And... We're going to bring up a dialog here for the import, and I'm going to check the option to uh, allow Katia to uh, actually mesh the file for me. Now this file may have already been a mesh, um, but we're going to tell it to create the facets anyway. Um, and if it were a point cloud, Katia would also create those facets automatically. So here we can see the mesh. It's very highly detailed. It's a sculpture of a lion with another uh, animal on the ground there, and uh, just something that you'd never want to have to try to surface manually. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to access my mesh preparation command. And what this command does is it walks me through a wizard type of a workflow where I can both clean and optimize that mesh. And this is something that you want to do before you begin working with almost any mesh. You want to make sure that it doesn't have any degenerate elements in there. Uh, we don't want any outlying uh, geometry floating out there in space. And we also want to make sure that there's no overlapping um, uh, areas where there are multiple polygons, anything like that. And I think what I'm going to do for purposes of the demo today is I'm just going to tell it I want everything automatically cleaned. So here, um, it's uh, Katia has already cleaned the mesh. I'm telling it to um, uh, get rid of isolated zones. And uh, as I open the different areas here, I can um, pick and choose what specific things that I want to. So we're going to go ahead and commit that, and now we have a very uh, clean, usable mesh. Okay, so next I'm going to access Digitized Shape to Surface, and uh, we're going to select this mesh, and you can see that Katia is going to propose some values here. So uh, what I'm attempting to do now is I'm going to automatically surface this mesh. So we'll try the default values first, and let's see what we get. All right, we get a warning message. And what the message is basically telling us is that it can't achieve the parameters that I've asked it to. That surface will not conform to the specifications that I gave it in the dialog. So I need to tweak some of the parameters a little bit. So I'm going to release the uh, system from full internal tangency. Um, and that's because the nature of the shape, I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, for the mean surface deviation, what I want Katia to try to do is to get within 0 0.05 millimeters of this. And then finally, I'm going to bump that surface detail up to 10,000. Uh, effectively, I'm just asking the software to try very hard. It's going to use more surface patches to accommodate that surface more accurately. And finally, for free edge tolerance, let's bump that down to about a quarter of a millimeter. And for the target ratio, I'm going to leave that at 90. I'm asking the software to try to get 90% within those specified tolerances. So when I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit apply. And let's see what we get. Okay, so once again, we're just going to get that warning that not all areas conformed uh, within the targets that I wanted. Um, keep in mind, though, if this were a simpler part, uh, you will rarely get that warning because it will be able to achieve all of your targets. But the nature of this uh, shape, I'm really just trying to capture an aesthetic here. So now we have this automatic surface in here, and uh, this alone is very powerful uh, because in a matter of minutes, we were able to surface this mesh and get uh, some, you know, a really nice surface representation. Um, but that's not enough because if we want to further make modifications to it now, which is really, you know, that's a, that's a big percentage of uh, the types of downstream workflows that you'd think about. Um, because of the complexity here and the fact that it was done with an, um, an automatic surfacing algorithm, that patch structure just does not lend well to any kind of updating. I mean, it's almost impossible. Um, so this is where this unique combination of tools to Katia comes in. Um, if you have a Katia automatic surface as we do in here, we can convert this to a sub D surface. 
Now, a sub-D surface uh, is short for subdivision surfacing, and this is the data type that is consumable and created and used by Imagine and Shape. Okay, and you can see that it's, it's pretty much just that quick. I've cut out probably a couple of seconds here and there in the video just to keep um, this tutorial concise, but really it takes about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to make that conversion. And now, the structure that you're looking at with all of the complexity, these are sub-D surfaces. And these can be edited with IMA. So let's take a look at uh, what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and fire up my Imagine and Shape app. And I'm going to double click on this IMA sub-D model. Now you can see Imagine and Shape is going to put up its control point structure. Um, and as we know from the workflows of Imagine and Shape, this is a really, really convenient, usable, um, and fun to play with tool. I can select, uh, you know, regions of these uh, sub-D uh, control point structures. And in a very convenient and kind of an artistic way, I can push and pull them around. So, you know, if somebody wanted to uh, 3D print this sculpture, but they wanted the maybe the that portion of the lion's mouth to protrude a little bit further, we can make these kinds of edits. And you can understand that with a traditional surfacing technique, this could take you weeks uh, to try to redo something like that. So it's a really simple example. Uh, you know, I'm just making small changes, but I think that um, this really demonstrates the kind of a value that you can achieve with this combination of tools that's really only available in a platform situation. So I hope that you liked the tutorial and would really love to hear your feedback if this is useful to you. Thanks very much.